Hey folks, uh, this okay. video is for the anxious, ambivalent, wave type pursuers in partnership. And if you're more of a distancer type of person, this is still going to be really valuable, I think, for you. So we just want to give you, I don't know, uh, maybe a tip here. We're going to do a longer podcast on this. So one thing, if you're an anxious person, your your person kind of pulls away, your other person, your partner pulls away from you. Withdraws, shuts down, retreats. Gets you, quiet. Gets quiet. You get anxious, right? You get kind of like, eh, what's going on? And if it lasts too long, you get pissed. And mm -hmm. you feel even more hurt mm -hmm. and more stressed, is my guess, right? So what can you do in these situations? Well, other than like learn how to relax and be with yourself, because that's huge. Uh, something that we hear people not talk about enough, which is you got to have empathy for your island or withdrawing partner. And we're going to talk yeah. about that. Yeah, like one way to do that is to, well, you might be kind of consumed with how upset you are and how you feel wronged, uh, which, you know, if it's gone on a lot, has its validity, right? But the move is to try to think about the distancer in, in their world and to think about what it might be like to be them. And if you know this person well, if you've been with them for a while, you probably know about their where they've come from and, again, mm -hmm. why conflict or interpersonal challenge or feeling criticized might really drive them inward. And so... You can say things to them to, you know, get the communication going. You can you could say something like, "Is that what you wanted me to say?" Yeah. Something about. Yeah. Uh, you could say something like, uh, "I know there's a lot going on in there, and you might not even know what to say or do about it. But I want to know. I'm interested. I'm curious about you, and mm -hmm. I'd like to understand you better." Yeah, can you imagine that that could relax them? It might. Because it might. Ch chances are better <laughs> that it's going to relax them with this type of statement that Ellen's suggesting versus what you habitually do. Hey, what's wrong? Why can't we talk? When are you going to come back? You know, or whatever. Yeah. It starts to feel, yeah. you know, you're going to push the person further away. Yeah, it's, it's easy to complain in, in that scenario, and that often won't go over well. Yeah. And again, this isn't like, you're trying to, I don't, you're just trying to reestablish connection. And obviously at some point you need to both agree on, okay, how are we going to navigate that in those moments when I want to work something out and you don't want to talk about it at all? Like, how can we do that in a way that's more fair to both of us? Mm -hmm. uh, but we're just talking about just sort of the initial approach because since you're the one feeling anxious and, and wanting to, to talk about it, you actually might have a way of, of getting that going. Yeah. Yeah. And so instead of doing this, you know, your, your way of like just thinking about yourself, remember you're going to extend, extend, mm -hmm. put yourself in their shoes. Imagine what it's like. Hey, yeah. Imagine it's hard. Imagine you don't know what to say. Yeah. That stuff Ellen suggested yeah. here. Yeah. And I was being general there. You might even be able to be more specific. Yeah. With your person. With your person. Given their history. Mm -hmm. Right. All right. Cool. Stay tuned for more. We're going to do a whole podcast on this um, and we'll unpack a few more steps that you could take. So make sure you're subscribed to the podcast and um, join me on a free training if you want at relationshipschool.com forward slash training. Thanks, Ellen. Yeah, thank you.